Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mr. Hello, hello. Responde. Ti gostas mesmo de mim de verdade? This is South America, and here is Brazil. Now, vamos lá, shall we? Brazil is big. Very big. And several thousands of years ago, its bigness became home to a number of tribes, such as the Tupi, a warlike people who came to dominate the coast, cultivating crops of cassava and cannibalizing their captives, assuming they'd absorb the strength of the unfortunate fellows they feasted on. This obviously didn't work as they were subdued by the Portuguese. You see, in the year 1500, the navigator Pedro Alvarez Cabral discovered Brazil and claimed it for Portugal, but they neglected it for a while to focus on Asia, where more money was to be had. In the 1530s, Portugal's king, directed stronger Portuguese colonial efforts in Brazil, and things started happening, such as sugarcane plantations, demand for the produce of which led to large-scale use of imported African slave labor. Then along came the Jesuits, led by Manuel Nóbrega, who built schools and churches and advocated the humane treatment of natives whom they converted to Christianity. Now, a certain Brazilian harbor had been overlooked by the Portuguese, and the French snapped it up, prompting Portuguese pushback, expelling the French and founding the city of Rio de Janeiro. Now, when Portugal was joined to Spain from 15 80 to 1640, it naturally inherited Spain's enemies, including the Netherlands, who nibbled off a bit of Brazil for themselves, which was governed very wisely by this man, but not by his successors. And the Portuguese Brazilians reconquered the land, boosting Brazilian nationalism. Bandeirantes began burrowing deeper into the continent in search of slaves, gold, or grazing ground. And the journeys of those rough and rugged men, like this fellow, facilitated the expansion of Brazil's borders. Numerous economic, political, and societal alterations were inducted by Portugal's Prime Minister, the Marquis of Pombal who embodied much of the European Enlightenment's philosophy and granted natives legal rights, while expelling the Jesuits, whose power and influence he resented. The Enlightenment also instilled ideas of revolution, driving one Giradentes to plan a revolution for independence in 1789. But when one of his fellow conspirators was offered some tax relief, he betrayed the plot, and Giradentes was hanged and cut into four pieces. After Napoleon invaded Portugal in 1807, the Prince Regent and his royal court fled to Brazil, and thus set up a Portuguese government in exile. The Prince was welcomed in Brazil, and he set about reforming the country, opening it up to trade with other countries, and encouraging Brazilian manufacturing. But when the war in Europe ended, that continent began calling on the royal family to return. The royals didn't really want to, and simply made Brazil co-equal in status to Portugal, which angered the Portuguese at having their status made identical to a colony. Poh. Brazilians themselves were not happy, as they increasingly were demanding independence. John VI was essentially compelled by his bifurcated political stresses to return to the mother country, leaving his son Pedro behind as regent. But Portugal wanted Pedro too. Pedro Pedro refused, and on September the 7th, 1822, declared Brazil's independence, later being crowned emperor. After Portuguese forces were beaten and recognized Brazil's sovereignty, a number of other occasions of unrest arose, such as the war that saw the emancipation of Uruguay. Brazil prospered and thrived under the bright star that was Pedro II, himself a melancholy, complicated man, but also highly intelligent, he spoke 14 languages, and who patronized science and culture. He was just the sort of person to steer Brazil into greatness. Victorious in three wars in a row, Brazil's economy grew. Immigrants arrived from Italy. Italy, Spain, and Germany, and modernization appeared in railways, factories, steamships, telegraph communication, and the abolition of slavery. But not seeing any promise in Pedro's potential heirs, the beloved popular emperor was quietly and unexpectedly overthrown in one of the most uneventful revolutions in history. He went into exile in Europe, where he died dreaming of Brazil. Shaky times followed as Brazil the Republic was led by dictators, but things got better. Rio was beautified, and Sao Paulo, glutted on wealth from coffee plantations, expanded considerably. Then the Great Depression happened. Then, in 1930, one Getulio Vargas lost the presidential election, so he forced his way into power in a revolution. And this was wonderful. I mean, just look at this girl. Look how happy she is for the new totalitarian regime. But in all seriousness, Vargas strengthened Brazil's economy, helped the poor, and invigorated industrialization. Under President Juscelino Kubitschek, the sparkling modernist new capital Brasilia was inaugurated with its many unusual buildings. This is a church, for instance, designed by the visionary architect Oscar Niemeyer. Political turbulence saw a military dictatorship run Brazil from 1964 to 85, a time of mass censorship, repression, and violent crackdowns on suspected state enemies. But Brazil still managed to win the FIFA World Cup in 1970, led by the legendary Pele. Problems like recession, inflation, debt, and so on were tackled by Cardoso, and remarkable growth was had under the popular Lula, who was nevertheless imprisoned for corruption. He was followed by Juma Rousseff, who ended up impeached for fiscal misdeeds. 2019, meanwhile, saw the election of nationalist populist Jair Bolsonaro. Now, recent years have seen tens of millions of 
of Brazilians lifted out of poverty, and we hope the crime-ridden shanty town favelas will one day be but a memory. Brazil is a country of many surprises, stereotypically the land of samba, carnaval, Copacabana beach, football, and a 98-foot-tall statue of Christ the Redeemer overlooking Rio. It's also the land of the Amazon, the world's smallest frog, armadillos, the largest Japanese population outside of Japan, cities full of Germans still speaking their East Pomeranian dialect, and 21 UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Brazil, despite its tumultuous past, has given us some of history's greatest sports people and injury fakers, as well as great writers, composers, and scientists. It has attained a high human development index and has the world's ninth biggest economy, receiving over 6 million tourists a year. But what awaits Brazil in the future? Comment below, but for now, bye-bye!